Um, what it feels like to be gay on a day-to-day -day basis in South Africa. Um, it's got its challenges. Um, it feels normal because it's, 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 it's my way of life. It feels, it feels normal because it's how I've chosen to live my life. Um, but it does come with these challenges where you run into people who don't understand the choice that you've made. Um, especially people who've known you before you've lived in your truth. I don't think we understand each other. And I do feel that in society, it's a very gray area that has not been explored enough and also not been communicated enough. And it's purely because of the non-conforming sort of area that people don't want to accept. I do think we have a long way to go um, in terms of educating people and getting to a place where people are comfortable enough with themselves and comfortable with other people. Um, and, and things like hate crime and, and people committing suicide from, from not being seen um, is something that needs to be resolved, starting at, at, at the base, at the basis of, of family or community um, before you can even start changing the world that you live in. Um, so it is a, co a continuous fight. For myself, I don't think it was a conscious choice to become non-binary. I believe that I've always been non-binary. I think from a young age, everybody from my teachers to my best friends, uh, even strangers would come up to me and tell me I was actually a man or a boy in the wrong body. And back then, you know, I'd laugh along and kind of just brush it off. But when I went back home, I thought to myself, maybe I actually am. Coming out as, um, you know, queer, non-binary, um, liking women, it was very, for my family, they took it better than I had expected. They took it pretty well. And I mostly think it's because I didn't really come out. I sort of just started talking about girls, having crushes on girls. And I started dressing differently and I started wearing a binder. I didn't really explicitly say it. I didn't really come out. But in doing so, they kind of got the message and I did get weird stares, I got comments, I got a lot of questions, even from my family. But I understand that it wasn't coming from a point of um, like maliciousness, it was more so just trying to understand me and how to love me the best way that they could. And so that was very, I was very fortunate to have that, especially in my family. Being non-binary to me feels like freedom because I don't have to conform to either end of the binary, male or female. I have the freedom to create myself every day and identify myself as what I want, as opposed to what everyone else is telling me I should be or shouldn't be. Um, pronouns, I believe when you address someone, a lot of people are very strict about that. They do not want to be misgendered and they will jump on you the second you use the wrong pronoun. But I believe that, well, for me personally, I believe using they, them as a singular form is the most comfortable for me right now and is what I'm happy with identifying and then going out and sharing that with other people. And so I think Using they, them as singular is very tricky for people, but I think as for right now, it's the most comfortable and it gets the message across a lot quicker than it would be if we had created this entirely different pronoun. So I do believe they, them is the best way, especially for myself right now. Whether you're stuck in traffic, preparing dinner, or simply chilling on the couch, we'd love to keep you company with Carte Blanche, the podcast. You can find all the latest episodes, weekdays on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever else you access your favorite shows. Join us for some unique stories as we make sense of the headlines.